welcome to Victor Business Forum, where we have been uh, examining different options in terms of investments. We looked at Rio Estate a few months back, and then we started looking at um, stock exchange investments. And last month, we looked at uh, the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. And this month, we are looking at uh, an aspect of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And we, I'm privileged to have with me Bekitemba Mafulela from uh, Momentum, who is uh, an aspect, there are different aspects of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. So today we'll zero in on just one aspect. And then the next few sessions, we'll zero in on the others. So welcome, Becky. We are excited to have you. And uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, thank you, Dr. Makone. Thank you for having me. Uh, so the name is Becky Mafulela. Uh, born and bred in Zim. I've been living in South Africa now for about 12 years. Um, I studied uh, economics at university, uh, worked in the financial services uh, industry. Uh, so this will be my 20th year, uh, believe it or not. Um, uh, and I mean, I've done uh, quite a few and have been exposed to quite a few things in the industry from uh, uh, stockbroking, uh, you know, the topic of today, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, investing on the stock market as well, uh, to corporate finance, and more lately, I've been in the financial planning industry, uh, working in supporting financial advisors that, that give individual financial advice to their clients. Excellent. Thank, thank you so much, Becky. It's uh, really a pleasure to have you. And we uh, obviously are going to start with prayer because we we welcome you. Now we want to welcome uh, the Holy Spirit to help us as we discuss this. We believe that uh, God wants his people to prosper and he gives us insights. And we believe that he's going to give you uh, the, uh, the ability to articulate and explain uh, this facet of investment so that our members uh, can go and explore further, having an awareness. This is really an educational program. And please note, members, that uh, we are not giving you financial advice. We are giving you an awareness of uh, what's available in the market. You need to do your own due diligence. You need to uh, consult um, uh, licensed uh, advisors when you leave this, this place. But, so, but let's start with prayer. Father, we thank you for clarity of thought, for clarity of mind. We thank you for your guidance, for your wisdom, even as we enter into this discussion. We thank you that you are guiding us, you are leading us, you are giving us uh, uh, the ability to comprehend these uh, uh, instruments that you have uh, placed in the world for wealth creation for the benefit of your people. We thank you and we honor you. We pray for Becky, even as he explains, as he educates, as he trains us. Father, we pray for clarity of thought, clarity of expression, and we thank you, Father, for an articulation that comes from you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Great. So, Becky, just start us with a very broad overview about uh, investments on the uh, Johannesburg Stock Exchange. What are the, what's available? What's the landscape like? So, so the Johannesburg Stock Exchange um, uh, is an opportunity to buy into what we call listed companies. Uh, so, if you look at the uh, at the JSE at the moment, the market cap on the JAC is about 1.35 trillion rands. So that's the combination of all the companies that are listed on, 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 on the stock exchange. Uh, the current number is about 340 old companies. So that's come down gradually over the years, you know, from about 600 companies to about 342 you know, two companies. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to invest in different sectors, I mean, from technology to banking, to mining companies, uh, to industrial companies. So there's a wide variety of, of choices uh, that one could actually invest, you know, depending on what type of sectors that you'd want to invest in. Right. So, so it's uh, quite uh, broad, but what are the minimum character, uh, categories that are there in terms of uh, if somebody wants to get onto the Johannesburg Stock Exchange? You are going to zero in on one category today. This is the focus of our discussion. But give us just a broad overview to say uh, what are the other categories that uh, people can consider? 
Okay. So, so if one wants to invest on the stock exchange, you could invest directly with what we call a stock broker. So that will be an intermediary that has got the, uh, the, the, the authority to trade shares on the stock market on your behalf. So you can actually instruct that stock broker or get advice from that stock broker what sort of particular companies to buy you know, on the stock market. So that's one way. Mm-hmm. The other way of investing uh, on the stock market is through an asset manager. Mm-hmm. So that uh, it can be a variety of you know, different you know, uh, well-known asset managers in South Africa. So the likes of your your Momentum or Alan Gray or Investec or Old Mutual, you know, all of those are, are, are you know, reputable asset managers. So they would, you'd be able to invest through their, their, their equity unit trust that in turn then buy shares on, on the stock market. So that's, that's two ways that one could be able to get exposure mm-hmm. on, on the stock exchange. Okay. So the, it's a direct way where you are buying shares and you hold your own portfolio, where you handpick your own, your own choices. And then the second way is where you go with unit trust, where you are going through an asset manager, you get uh, a basket of shares and you buy a unit out of that. Okay. Then That's correct. Then there's a third way. I think you, uh, I've heard people talk of something like exchange, something Exchange, exchange EFTs or something. What, what is that? Yeah. So exchange traded funds are, are almost a little bit of a hybrid between the two things that I've just described now. Mm-hmm. So it's still a, a unit trust, but it actually it trades directly on the stock exchange. So you would be able, for example, to buy an ETF that has got the top 40 companies that are listed you know, on, on that particular stock exchange as one portfolio trading on the stock market. And it trades very similar to the way a, a share itself would actually trade. So the difference between that particular unit trust is that it trades directly on the stock market, whereas the unit trust that you buy through an asset manager does not trade directly on the stock market. You buy it from the asset manager themselves and, and its value is then determined by the shares that are actually trade on the stock exchange. Great. So if for simplicity and clarity for our members, we are saying that the, you can own shares directly on the stock exchange and you hold your own shares. Or you can go and buy a basket which has been put together by uh, an asset manager who is competent, who has analyzed and says, look, I get better returns if I put together a parcel of these so it allows for diversification. It allows for you not to be exposed to just one counter. So you're saying there's so many counters that are put in that basket. So you buy just a unit or certain units out of that basket. So when, uh, when Becky is saying that you, you are not trading on the stock exchange directly, so he's saying that in reality, the investment is uh, the, the, the asset manager is the one who is buying these stocks and putting that, uh, that basket. And then you are buying into that basket. As the value increases, your value increases. Is that correct? That's correct, Dr. McCormick. Yeah. Yes. So, so let, let's zero in now onto those unit trusts. Uh, how do I go about... Is, no, before we go there, what is the... Why should I do an indirect investment rather than a direct investment? What are the advantages of a unit trust to actual holding shares as an individual. I'm just starting from zero. Okay. So, so, the, so in investment, the, the, we, we say often that the only free lunch available is diversification, right? In the sense that when you're diversified, you've not put all your eggs in one basket. You know, uh, as you would know, if you put, you know, all your eggs in one basket mm. and, and that basket cracks, you might lose all your eggs, right? Sure. Whereas if you put your eggs in different baskets and something goes wrong with one basket, at least you still have the other one. So the main difference really with, with um, buying through an asset manager is that you, you go through someone who is an expert in that area, would be able to analyze the different companies, do valuations of those companies, look for the best opportunities for you, and then spread around your, your risk by investing in different companies as opposed to you buying directly, you know, in which case you then have to be able to know why you buy in a particular company. 
So we often say that a good company is not necessarily a good investment. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you know about a particular brand, it does not necessarily mean that it's the best investment opportunity for you to put your, your, your money in. So it's really about the use of those professional services to be able to guide you and make sure that you are investing in a prudent way. So the, the use of professional service gives me the ability, instead of me thinking of analyzing, which I'm probably not as competent, uh, I have professionals who are going to analyze the investments. And secondly, within that basket, there is diversification. So I'm managing my risk as I go along. That's, that's, that's brilliant. So how do these perform? Or, or no, before we talk about performance, um, Suppose I'm interested in uh, buying unit trust. So from where I am now, I'm a newbie. What's the process? What do I need to do? Okay. So, so if you want to buy a unit trust, you can approach any one of the sort of reputable um, asset managers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the one way. The other way, you can buy through what we call an investment platform. So a, a good way of thinking about it is that if you wanted to buy your groceries, mm -hmm. instead of going to the factory, you go to a supermarket that gives you an opportunity to buy different brands mm -hmm. you know, in that one supermarket. So let's say, as an example, you wanted to buy, um, let's say, different types of drinks, right? You could be able to go into Checkers. And in Checkers, you can buy Coca-Cola, you can buy Fanta, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. so, so, so those are the two ways. You can either buy through an asset manager directly or you can buy through an, what we call an investment platform that gives you access to different asset managers on one investment platform. Some of the asset managers would also have uh, their own funds, but also then have you know, a platform as well. So for example, Momentum would actually have our own unit trust portfolios, but then you can also access different portfolios on our investment platform. So South Africa in total has got about 20 of these different platforms that you'll be able to access different portfolios on. Okay, can you give a, a few names? Let's say we are talking of uh, asset managers. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm clueless. I'm new to the South African market and I'm trying to, what's the starting point? Give me a few names. <laughs> So the so the, the the big sort of uh, uh, brands would be from your Momentum, Alan Gray, Old Mutual, Investec, Coronation. Uh, those are some of the brands that you could be able to access. You know the you know different portfolios from. Okay, excellent. And now um, that's great. So I can go th through um, an asset manager. Then you talked about a platform. I'm still trying to wrap my mind. What, what, can you explain a little bit more about this platform where I can buy from? So, so the concept of your platform is really to make it easy for a client who wants to buy different portfolios from different asset managers. Right? So what did you allow you? So for example, some of these brands that I've talked about, if you went on to a single platform, you'll be able to access these different portfolio managers. So it's really more like a supermarket uh, to buy different, you know, unit trust portfolios, okay. if I was to put it simply in that way. Yeah, I, I hear that. But where do I get these platforms? Are they like platform? Is it online? Is it at some place where I go get this platform? So where exactly? Remember, I'm, I'm clueless. I'm trying to get into this, into this. So where do I go? I know Momentum, I can go find Momentum. Um, the old Mutual, I think I can locate them. But these platforms, where do I get them from? So, so all of those companies you've mentioned uh, are typical would also have a platform as well, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you can actually uh, uh, access it directly, you know, maybe online, mm -hmm. or you could also access it through the services of an independent financial advisor or any other financial advisor that you might have access to, to help you to access those platforms. So most of the big, you know, uh, financial services groups do actually have, you know, platforms. So the biggest ones would be, you know, from your Alan Gray, Old Mutual, Investec, um, uh, Momentum, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the, that's great. And now you talked about uh, financial advisor. Uh, 
what is the role of a financial advisor in in this game in terms of uh, getting unit trust so so the role of a financial advisor is to be able to ideally get access to someone who's independent from the different fund managers and will be able to do an assessment of your specific needs right so there's quite a number of things that a financial advisor could do so for example you know you could discuss with your financial advisor to what are you saving for right uh what sort of time frame do you have you know to to save for that particular goal so that goal could be from you know taking your child to university it could be you know saving for a rainy day it could be saving for your retirement it could be maybe you know uh, putting together capital to start a business or just for example to be financially secure so the role of a financial advisor is to discuss those specific goals that you've got the time frame that you need to invest for those particular things for example maybe the tax implications of of that particular investment you're doing and also to 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 discuss as well the different types of products that one can actually use to save for those different you know goals right uh and also for example as well you could look at the, at your risk profile mm-hmm. for for that for 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 that particular objective that you've got because then if you save for a rainy day the risk profile that you have for that particular portfolio might be very different to the portfolio for your retirement planning right mm-hmm. so the role of a financial advisor is to look at all of those goals look at what your risk profile is for that particular goal the different products available the different portfolios and they help you to construct a financial plan that actually makes sense for what you're trying to do so so the financial advisor is helping you to say let's personalize um, your investment to your to who you are to your goals to your interests rather than just going to sit uh, in a Yeah, outside the church meeting then people say you know what i bought this and i bought that and then i rush off and i, I buy so it's it's not a template it's something that uh, suits me and my interests and my goals my risk appetite and things like that that's correct yeah. because ultimately mm-hmm. uh, a, a good financial plan is mm-hmm. is going to be very personal mm-hmm. so someone else might have invested in property or in shares or in bonds or offshore and it worked out for them for whatever they were to, uh, trying to do in their own risk profile mm-hmm. but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for you as well so you need something that is personal that is bespoke for your own needs and that's where the financial advisor comes in and but they come at a cost they do come at a cost mm-hmm. um you know but the cost is only in the absence of value Mm-hmm. so so and and typically what an advisor will charge you is negotiable you know between yourself and your financial advisor mm-hmm. and and different advisors will charge you know in different ways depending on their own value proposition and the complexity of your of your financial needs okay so suppose we have agreed on the the financial advisor and i approach in suppose i approach to approach you as a financial advisor which you are not at this stage um typically what what is the process from there on so so like you you rightfully mentioned so i used to be a financial advisor myself mm-hmm. um but i'm no longer one now so i moved from advice into consulting mm-hmm. so i support financial advisors in my current role but if you are typically you know to approach a financial advisor you have to make sure that that person is properly licensed mm-hmm. to actually give financial advice right so 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 advice in south africa is a regulated uh, activity mm-hmm. that you have to be licensed with the regulatory body uh, that's called the financial services conduct authority or fiska mm-hmm. so that particular body is the one that registers and 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 regulates all financial advice in the country Mm-hmm. so that person number one would have to be regulated and they'll be able to provide you that information that shows that they're regulated uh and their license number in terms of their financial services uh uh, uh provide the number mm-hmm. and the sub categories of products or areas of financial planning that they are actually allowed to give financial advice so typically if you approach an advisor they'll be able to give you that information you discuss 
your specific needs to say, these are my needs. Uh, they will tell you what they are, you know, their competencies are in terms of specific areas that you need advice because it really depends. You might be looking at the healthcare. So you need an advisor who's properly licensed to, to give advice in the healthcare space. Right. You might be looking at investments. So you need an advisor who's licensed to do investments. It could be your risk planning. Mm-hmm. Maybe you need to protect your family from an estate planning perspective, mm-hmm. or it could be to protect your assets, you know, short-term insurance. So it really depends. Some advisors do a little bit of everything. Right. Some advisors specialize. Mm-hmm. So you might potentially need, you know, a number of people to assist you depending on what your needs are, or it could be one advisor mm-hmm. who assists you in that respect. So if I was to come to an organization like Momenda, um, would I be able to have um, access to a number of those advisors at the same, the same place so that I'm not running around getting an advisor for this there, an advisor for this there? You, you, you might be. So, mm-hmm. so you would have to inquire. So what we do, just to give an example, is Momentum. Mm-hmm. So in the industry as well, there's two types of advisors. Mm-hmm. So there's tied advisors. So those advisors that work for a specific company mm-hmm. and will be able to only sell the products of that one company. Mm-hmm. So as Momentum, for example, we've got our own financial advisors mm-hmm. that we call Momentum Financial Planners. Mm-hmm. So they can actually assist you with the, with the entire product range that Momentum has got. So mm-hmm. that would be from healthcare to short term to life insurance to employee benefits to investments, etc. cetera, mm-hmm. right? And then we've got also what we call independent financial advisors. So those now will be able to give you products of different companies. So an independent financial advisor will be able to give you momentum, give you discovery, old mutual salam, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it really depends as well yourself. What are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Are you looking for one advisor who will be able to give you a range of products from one company? Mm -hmm. Or are you looking for an independent financial advisor will be able to give you a range of products across different companies and also across different elements of financial planning. Right. So, so Momentum, we do work with both types of advisors. So we work with independent financial advisors and we also got our, our own tied advisors as well. So uh, most of the companies and Momentum included, if you were to go on our website and say, find an advisor, mm-hmm. you'll be able to get a listing of different types of advisors, including the actual profiles mm. of the advisors themselves. And you'll be able to contact that advisor or check what are they, you know, licensed to do and what areas are they supporting their clients. And then you engage with that advisor to actually see whether they're a good match for you. Uh, and you're free to actually engage a couple, you know, to get a sense of what's working for you. Because ultimately it's a, it's a trust relationship. So you need to feel comfortable with the person who's going to assist you in that respect. Excellent. That, that, that's powerful. And so you keep talking to products. Can you get a little bit deeper? So this unit trusts, what exactly is a product? And what kind of products can I find if I come there? So, so in terms of, uh, of, of, of unit trust, you, you can get products uh, depending on what are you saving for. Mm-hmm. Right. So remember earlier on, I talked about, you know, you could be saving for an emergency fund or at any day, you could be saving to maybe buy yourself a new car after five years, or you could be saving for, for retirement. Right. And, and as, as in that entire range, there's different types of you know, products available. So I almost put it into three buckets. So I would say the short term bucket, the medium term bucket and the long term bucket. So in the short-term bucket, you could, for example, use a, a money market unit trust, you know, to save for a rainy day. You could also use a bank product as well, where you go to a bank and you, so, you, you open, say, a, a savings account or a short-term deposit account, you know, to, to put your money. Uh, but ideally, for that short-term bucket, you should be able to be able to easily access your money. Right. Because remember, the whole point of that emergency fund is that when you've got an emergency, the emergency cannot wait for 30 days, right? Mm -hmm. You know, often the emergency needs money, you know, tomorrow, you know, so, or after two or three days. So ideally you need a, you know, a a, a flexible, a liquid, you know, type of uh, structure 
And then on the medium term, it could be a, a normal unit trust account, right? Uh, there's also new products on the market as well. For example, now we've got what we call a tax-free investment, mm. right? So the tax-free investment can also be in a unit trust structure, but it offers certain tax benefits that uh, the treasury, you know, allows people that invest through a tax-free investment. Mm. And then on the long term, you know, uh, it can be a retirement annuity. So mm. that retirement annuity underlying it can also be a unit trust, mm. but the benefits of a retirement annuity are much more than what you would find in the other two buckets. Because if you're saving for retirement, there are certain tax concessions that uh, that government through Treasury uh, offers people that are saving for retirement. Okay, be- beautiful. And uh, zero in a little bit on the tax-free investments in the unit trust. I think you talked about them in the medium uh, term okay. investment. Mm. Okay, so the tax-free investment is a, is a new dispensation uh, that was introduced a few years ago, where you can invest up to thirty-three thousand per per year mm-hmm. in, in that uh, in that particular vehicle. So there's a cap for it, uh, with a lifetime limit of five hundred thousand. Okay. So so the main benefit of that vehicle is that your growth is not taxed, mm-hmm. because typically, you know, when you invest in you know whatever you invest in. Uh, uh, the growth is taxable. So, for example, if you earn interest, you know, in a savings account, that interest that you earn is taxable, right? Mm -hmm. There are certain tax-free thresholds that are available, but overall, the the, the return itself is taxable. Mm -hmm. But on this particular tax-free investment, any interest income you earn, any capital gains you earn, any dividends that are paid in your portfolio, all of that will be tax-free because it's, 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 it's a tax-free investment. And it's really to encourage, particularly those first-time savers that have not been saving before. So for, for those tax-free, I think that, that's a good uh, thing, and I would want to encourage our members to consider that. Um, we, we, are, we are looking at encouraging people to also invest as uh, stock valves and as, as uh, companies. But would, would you know whether the tax-free investments will be available to those or there are some restrictions or it may be available only for individuals or something. Are there any, any restrictions on that? So there are restrictions on the tax free investment. Mm-hmm. So, so you have to invest in it as a natural person. Right. So you'd have to be an individual in your own, you know, uh, um, uh, respective, you know, uh, name yeah. to be able to then benefit from that particular tax free investment. So for example, if you want to do, you know, structures like you mentioned, like a stock for example, mm-hmm. you know, ideally there you would have to just invest in a in a normal unit trust account mm-hmm. or in a in an endowment type structure, you know, that 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 you can use for for a for a for a stock view because now you're investing as a group of people. So you can't just use a a tax-free investment for that. Okay. So if we are a family, um, you said you are allowed to have a tax-free investments of up to 33000 a year. Did I hear you right? That's correct, yeah. So as a family, it means we, if we are both taxpayers, we can actually say, uh, oh, is, there, is there a requirement for you to be a registered taxpayer? Well, the the, the 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 main benefit will obviously be for you not to pay tax, right? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so we are probably talking someone who's ordinarily a tax yeah. resident in South Africa. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, from from that perspective. Yes. So, so, if if I am if we are a family, so it means uh, my wife and I could both do investments, and so literally that means we can do six to six or something like that per year. If you say if she does in her own name and I do in my own name. That's correct. Okay. I think that that, that sounds good. I think I would, I would, I would, I would encourage that. Uh, it's good to, to exploit uh, incentives that the government makes available. Okay. Well, well, beautiful. So, Get a little bit deeper. I, right now, I don't want to ask you a question. I wanted to just talk from your 
wealth of information. I am sure you probably even have a presentation, a mini presentation you want to do. Just to hit it and let's see, let's understand, help us understand this, uh, um, this unit trust. Anything you want to say that can really help, help our people? Okay. So let me see if I can just share um, a, a presentation. Great. We, we, we like seeing. Go ahead. Let's see. Okay. So, so like, like, I, uh, like I shared before, uh, the equities market is, is quite significant in South Africa. And, and the total size about 1.35 trillion value, like we shared before, there's different opportunities for you to access, you know, that, that opportunity from your exchange traded funds that we talked about earlier on uh, to your unit trust portfolios. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that just now. And then fixed income, the total market size there is about 1.8 trillion rands. So it's a significant... So, so, sorry, Becky, sorry, Becky, to interrupt you. Your volume is uh, playing up again. Oh, my volume is playing up. Okay, let me see if I now can. We can hear you loud now. That's okay. Now, now you can hear me clearly. Yes, now that's okay. Clear, yeah. Uh, okay, just let me know if if you're losing me again. Oh, all right. And and then the 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 South African stock market is quite big. I um, mean, it's the nineteenth largest stock exchange in, in the world. Obviously, wow, the US. that's big. Yeah. It's 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 quite significant. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can see there that one of the things that we talked about earlier on with the stock market is is the issue that things are going up and down, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it, you need some sort of um, professional support to be able to know what to buy and when to buy and, 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 and when to you know, sell in terms of when you think that the valuation is right. So just to give you a sense, you can see that big drop mm -hmm. in 2020 when the stock market fell by 30.4% over a very short period of time, mm -hmm. right? I mean, most of that of those losses, we've recovered them, uh, mm -hmm. so the market has bounced back quite nicely, you know. But that is the hazards of of the stock market, and mm -hmm. potentially some of the benefit of going through indirectly through an, a professional asset manager. Mm -hmm. So when you go through a professional asset manager, you can see there on on my left, there's different things from mutual funds to commodities to exchange traded funds to stocks, uh, bonds, etc. So unit trust there is, is the sort of easier way for most retail clients to invest. There's over a thousand different types of unit trusts in South Africa. Uh, each of those would have different uh, underlying asset classes from your shares, your bonds, your property, offshore, etc. And then we talked about the exchange traded funds as well. And then we talked about the personalized share portfolios where you buy directly through a stock broker, right? And then the, the portfolio funds would, could be, you know, a uh, different mix of uh, unit trusts that are invested in different asset classes that can also be a good option as well. And then there's guaranteed solutions that give you a guaranteed return where one does not want to, you know, invest in, you know, in, in different risky things and would rather, you know, get a, a predetermined return. So, so I'll talk a little bit about just... Uh, overall, you know, uh, personal finances, right? And 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 I and I think we shared, you know, previously when we just we spoke before Dr. Makoni on the issue of debt, right? Yeah. Benefits of budgeting. Mm -hmm. So so I think if you look at the 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 extreme right uh, column on on finances, just only 13% of people are able to pay off their credit cards. Uh, uh, sufficiently on a monthly basis, 51% are in areas. So I think ultimately, you know, the elephant in the room is the issue of debt, right? Right. And, and I think, you know, in this being a, a Christian platform, you know, the Bible clearly says that, you know, if you are a borrower, you are a slave to the lender, right? True. So you want to get out yeah. of debt as much as is possible. You want to get out of debt as much as, as possible. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, most people... Uh, are living, you know, uh, with a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. So, so myself personally, you know, one of the things that I've tried to apply as much as I can from the word is to be very sparing with your debt, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 ideally, you want to use debt for things that are uh, are growing your net worth, 
Right. You know, so, so for example, if you get, you know, a loan as a student loan and you go and get your degree or your education and you invest in yourself because ultimately you are your biggest asset, right? True. Because you, you create, you are the, you are the income engine of your family typically, right? Mm-hmm. So, so if you invest in an education or maybe borrowing money and to go and buy a property, you know, you buy a house or you borrow money in moderation you yeah. know, to start a business, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because you don't want to start a business that is overly leveraged because then you've got a different sort of problem. You know, That's because true. often when you've got too much debt in your business and the cash flows are not coming in, that might also not work for you as well, right? Mm-hmm. But you'll find that the majority of the debt, you know, uh, 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 you know, borrowings in South Africa are for consumptive expenditure. So it's consumer right? debt and it's very expensive. It's very expensive credit cards debt, you know, where you're paying up to 32% per year. I mean, uh, an investment that's going to give you 32%, you know, is almost like a dream at the moment. Where, so you know, so most hold, 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 on, hold on right there. I, th- I think that yeah. you're onto something right there. So we are saying uh, if I am investing, the general return, what kind of general return am I looking at? Averagely, you know, on the South, on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange right now. So, so the stock market over the very long term, you know, can give you, you know, double-digit return. So you're mm-hmm. looking at more than sort of ten percent, twelve, thirteen percent, but over the very, very long term, yeah. right? I mean, if you look in the more recent past, uh, mm-hmm. even in the last year, the stock market is actually negative for the last sort of two, three years mm-hmm. because of the the, you know, what happened to our markets earlier in the in yeah. the year because of the, the COVID crisis. Yeah. So, so, so typically, shares are supposed to give you a higher return over cash mm-hmm. over the long term. Right. But over the short term, mm-hmm. you know, anything can happen. So right now, uh, uh, cash or, you know, money market is actually giving a better return than shares. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's a good insight. My, my point was... Um, I wanted to come back to the issue of consumer debt. So you're saying okay. best uh, case scenario over the long term, we have an annual return on the JSC of double digit, 12, 13, 15%. But if you have consumer debt, it can go up to 32% per annum. Mm-hmm. So, so doesn't that mean uh, from uh, an investment perspective, doesn't that mean that we should, if I have consumer debt, I should be working at liquidating that before I think of investment because the return I get from the investment is wiped away by this consumer debt that is overhanging. Would you want to talk towards that? Or how do you feel? And what do you think? No, that's, a, that's a very good uh, uh, point, uh, Dr. McConey, because ultimately, you know, if you've got very expensive debt, it's almost impossible to, to create wealth, right? I mean, you know... Uh, uh, ultimately, people that create wealth are people that have got, you know, low debt and uh, have got free cash flows to be able to invest. So if you've got, you know, credit card debt as an example, where you're being charged up to 32%, you know, when, when your credit card is in areas, right? Um, you know, there's almost no investment that's going to give you that return. Mm-hmm. So you're probably better off just paying off your debt, right? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but then at the same time, you have to balance it as well with with what you are investing for so that is where potentially a good financial advisor can help you to think through that so i'll give you a very simple example because you might be paying off your debt but if you don't have an emergency fund Mm -hmm. what would happen if you get another emergency Mm -hmm. you might even go to more even more expensive debt true so so the answer is not very simple Mm -hmm. one has to apply your mind so you might be paying off debts but at the same time, putting money every month into a savings uh, product as well to create a bit of an emergency fund for yourself. Because one has to think from a common sense perspective to say, why did you end up getting into debt in the first place? Mm-hmm. It's because often you had no savings, right? right. So, so the balancing act of, of paying debt versus you know, saving an investment as well would depend. You know, so one has to apply your mind, but there is, from a mathematical perspective, certainly paying off expensive debt makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 
Excellent. So, sorry for that detour. Uh, you can proceed. You are talking financial planning and you are talking about only 13% of consumers paying off their, uh, their credit cards each month. You, you, you can continue. Absolutely. So, I mean, if, if you look further here as well, I don't know if you can see my case, right? right Up yeah. to 40% of South Africans, they, 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 a 10,000 emergency would actually break their budget altogether, right? Really? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would have thought it would be higher than that. But it's not very unique to South Africa. Mm -hmm. Even in America, they mm -hmm. state that the, the half of Americans are 500 US dollars away from financial aid. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so the reality of the matter is that people are not saving. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they don't have any you know, uh, uh, savings put away. And typically, you're supposed to have at least between three to six months of your monthly expenses in, a, in, a, in, in that first bucket, that the emergency bucket we talked about, right. so that you avoid, you know, this sort of situation where if you've got an emergency that you need 10,000, you are knocking on your neighbor's door and all of these things because you've not you know, being prudent with your own resources. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That, that's so, quite a, a wake-up call right there. So, so I would say almost everybody, the first thing to, to start, you know, looking at uh, with the help of your advisor is to put in place an emergency fund, right? Mm -hmm. So that you've got, you know, a certain uh, portion of your, of your money to assist you with your emergencies. And then that medium term bucket, that's where now we're talking about things, for example, like buying a car, right? Mm -hmm. uh, over 90% of the cars that are bought are bought on debt, right? Mm -hmm. But the question that one can ask is to say, do you have to buy a car on debt? I don't think you have to do anything. I mean, myself personally, I've never bought a car on debt my whole life, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I try and save as much as I can. And then when my car is too old, I, I go and buy it cash, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's something as well we can, you know, challenge each other to say, you know, instead of spending so much money on cars, and, and coincidentally, the two things that eat most of your cash is where you live and the car you drive, mm -hmm. right? You know, because often you, you hear people say, you know, save on the coffee, etc., mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in fact, that's not where your biggest problems are. You probably can enjoy your coffee. Yeah. I don't think it's going to affect your budget that much. Mm -hmm. But if you go and live in an area that you completely cannot afford and you drive a car that you can't afford, right, especially in these days of COVID, you probably park that car as well. You're paying a lot of insurance and all of those things. So, so I think that that ability to, to manage the big cost is very important in how you fund those things. So potentially that, yeah, so go ahead. So I was, was going to say, so it's important to live within your means and to be modest in your expenditures because you are thinking long-term. Absolutely, especially the big expenditures mm. because they are the ones that have the biggest impact uh, on, your, on your budget, right? Mm. You know, because then if you, you know, uh, um, save, for example, just a car. Let's take a car because most of us, you know, at some point we will, will buy a car. Right? Mm -hmm. If you buy an expensive car, you know, that alone is already eating most of your free cash flows that you'd have been otherwise been able to what, to save, right? Mm -hmm. And just from a personal experience, one of the things that I've, that, that, I've, that I've realized just, you know, myself personally, just working with a lot of clients in the industry is that, if you save money, you will find that it will be very difficult for you to go and buy that expensive car. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you think about saving, say, 500,000 rands and mm -hmm. then go and buy a car, it, it's going to be quite tough for you to do that. Whereas right. if you just buy those things on debt, you tend to overshoot mm -hmm. and buy, you know, things that are way outside of your, of your affordability, you know, sort of levels. So yeah. that medium bucket, what it can really help you is to start saving for these things, you know, mm -hmm. so that you, you buy as much as you can for cash mm -hmm. and you don't have to borrow, you know, uh, uh, for a lot of your, your bigger purchases as much as, as, as one can possibly do. 
And then the third bucket, obviously, would be, you know, to save for retirement, mm -hmm. you know, so that when you get to a retirement age, you know, as the Bible says that you should, you should be, you know, a, a good man shall live in inheritance for his children's children's children. children. Right. But right. we know a lot of our people, you know, the children are, in, are always, you know, you know, supporting, which is good as well. Mm -hmm. But it's mostly because we've not been able to do, you know, uh, our, our personal finances well. Excellent. So quickly, um, we took quite a while talking about those three baskets. Can you just summarize those three baskets in one minute again, just for, to refresh our memories, then you move on? Okay. So the, so the three buckets is the short-term bucket, which is your emergency bucket. Mm -hmm. that, would, that would protect you from these financial shocks where 40% of South Africans don't have you know, would, would be, you know, in financial ruin with the 10,000 bucket, with the 10,000 cost. The medium term bucket is to buy most of these bigger purchases, whether it's buying a car or buying a new TV or, you know, taking your, your child, you know, to school, right? And then the long term bucket is to really save for your retirement planning and for your financial, you know, security in the long term mm -hmm. when you get to that point where you're not able you know, to provide for yourself, you know, uh, financially. Oh, excellent. Okay, you can proceed. Okay. And, and then obviously the other important thing to consider as well is health, right? Um, and you can see from this diagram here that, you know, most of the deaths worldwide are because of the four, you know, uh, major conditions, diabetic, uh, uh, you know, uh, chronic respiratory diseases, cancer, and cardiovascular diseases, right? So it's also important as well to, to provide uh, for, for that through a, a good health plan. It could be a medical aid, it could be, you know, it could be health insurance and obviously living healthily, you know, so, you know, you eating healthy, physical activity, alcohol abuse and, 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 and for example, maybe smoking, you mm -hmm. know, that can, that can damage your health. Right. So often, sometimes people don't have, they don't provide for their health care. And you could actually, you know, end up spending a lot of your wealth uh, way, you know, if one lives health to prevent or you've got a, a good health plan, you know, to provide for that. So that's also a very important thing, particularly for people that are self-employed that yeah. sometimes don't tend to, to get these sort of benefits to support themselves. So in terms of financial planning, it's important to uh, manage your health by eating well, exercising, and by also making sure that you have a health insurance. So that's also part of wealth creation because you are uh, trying to plug the leaks that can uh, erode your, your investment capacity and your wealth creation capacity. That's correct. Yeah. Excellent. We're still listening. Yeah. And then obviously the, the, the third one is, 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 is safety. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's important obviously to, for your, to have, you know, insurance uh, for your assets. Because, uh, I mean, you don't want to, after you've spent a lot of money, you know, to save and buy a car, for example, or household goods that, that they're not properly insured. So it's always important as well to, to have the right types of insurance. And, and when it comes to insurance, it's not just your assets and your, and your health. You also want to insure even your income, right? Um, and by that, we mean from a family unit. So often people look at life cover as something that is not, you know, an important thing. But if you think about, you know, your family, if you're not there, what, how would they be provided for? Mm. So, so to make sure that you... You've got enough life cover for yourself and your family is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, also things like disability cover, severe illness cover, those things are quite important as well because they, they protect you, you know, should something happen to your health or something happen to you outright. So when we talk about investments, it's, you know, it's also important to manage the risk side of things from an insurance perspective. Sure. You know, so it's a comprehensive mm -hmm. financial plan that you ensure your assets, you ensure yourself, mm -hmm. uh, you ensure your health, and then you create the, the free cash flows to then invest in those three buckets that we talked about earlier on. Beautiful, beautiful. 
So I think I'll probably sort of yeah, summarize it like that. I don't know if you, mm. there's other specific elements maybe that you might want me to dip in a little bit. Yes, I, I think this, this is beautiful. It gives us a, a good picture. Um, let's move on to come back to the unit trust uh, investments. What are the major mistakes that you have uh, seen in uh, people who are trying to invest? What, what are the major mistakes you've seen people make? So, so I think the, the, the major mistake really is to invest in something that uh, supposedly did well recently. Mm -hmm. right? So in other words, we call it chasing past performance. Right. So, so the best okay. way to invest is to invest we'll stop sharing the screen if you okay. don't need it anymore. That we... yeah, I can do that. Excellent. Th thank you. Okay. Good. So, yeah, we love seeing your face. You see. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I, so I, I think it's um, it, it, it's 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 chasing past performance, right? Mm -hmm. And investing in things that you know you you hear that these are the most, you know, uh, uh, you know, things that are giving very, very high returns. Mm. So chasing very high returns is a bad way of investing. A mm. good way of investing is to invest with a goal in mind, right? right. Uh, and, and a good return is simply a return that meets your goal. It's, mm. not, it's not the highest return. So I would say, you know, you know, it's it's about having a good financial plan. You know, having discipline in your financial plan mm -hmm. and sticking to your goals and your plans. You know, ideally with the help, uh, you know, of a good, competent financial advisor. You know, firstly to help you to put the plan, and then secondly to be an accountable accountability partner for you. So, so I'd say that's probably the biggest mistake that most people do that they don't plan and and they don't stick to a good plan. So it's important to, to plan and it's important not to be moved by the winds or by the, what people say in the streets. People say, oh, I have a very great return here and you chase returns. And if you chase returns you, and you try to, try to time the market, you are going to lose. But if you go on into a unit trust and you say, look, this is diversified, this is my plan and I'm investing towards a plan, and I can balance my portfolio as I see as it uh, um, as my situation changes. But you are going according to plan. You are not allowing the winds that just blow around to affect what you are doing. Uh, that's what you are recommending. Absolutely. So, so like you rightfully said, it's 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 planning, and then it's sticking to that plan, and to also have a diversified portfolio. Because, mm -hmm. like I said earlier, on the only free lunch in investment. Is diversification because where you put all your eggs in one basket, invariably that's always very risky to do. Mm -hmm. So it's it's to have a, a, a good solid investment portfolio, uh, but also select the right product as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so 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 there's quite a few things one has to think about. Uh, then also tax is also a very important consideration, right? Because often we just think about the, the different investments. But then, you know, the tax structuring of those investments is also very important. The product that you pick is also quite important as well, you know, and there's different rules that govern these different products. Yeah. And, and I think you, you say something quite uh, important here when you talk about uh, the impact of tax. Many people don't consider it, but in reality, if you think about the margins in terms of returns, uh, if you have a certain return, it can easily begin to trail behind inflation once you factor in the tax, the taxation. So structuring it uh, is important in terms of thinking of tech, the impact of tax on the investment. That, that's correct, Dr. McConney. Mm -hmm. Because if you look, for example, if you're saving towards retirement, mm -hmm. there, is, there is a number of tax-advantaged products that one can use Mm. You know, say, for example, a pension fund or a provident fund or a retirement annuity. Because one of the benefits of a, of a retirement product, at least in South Africa, is that you effectively get subsidized up to your marginal tax rate when you contribute into those, into those particular products. Mm. So just to give you a simple example. So let's say you put, you know, for every rand 
that you put into a retirement fund, if your marginal tax rate is 45%, say mm. you're earning you know, uh, that particular, those sort of levels of income, mm. or even if it's 30%, that means that for every one rand you put, you get back 30 rands you know, from, from the tax man, from SARS. So that's a significant... 30 cents, not 30 rand, right? Oh, 30 cents, sorry, yeah, 30 cents. Because, 30, because 30 cents. rand for every rand is a, <laughs> a gold mine, my brother. <laughs> no, 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 that, that would be a pyramid scheme, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely yeah. would be, yeah. Yeah, so you'd get back your, your 30 cents or your 40 cents or your 45 cents, depending on your marginal tax rate. Mm. And that makes a significant, you know, difference. And not just that, you know, those particular products, the growth acts a little bit like the tax-free investments as well, mm. in, that, in the sense that the growth is not taxable. So any capital gains you get in that product, any dividends that are paid, any interest income you earn is also tax-free, the growth, right? Mm-hmm. So that allows your money to grow at a much faster rate right. than, for example, if you just invested in, in, a, in a normal product that is not a, a retirement product. It's, it's incredible. I think given, given over time, allowing for compound uh, interest, uh, it's, it's incredible. It grows your wealth quite incredibly. So we would like to encourage uh, our members to begin to think about these kinds of products and say, how do I invest uh, considering where I am, considering the tax implications, considering the, the advice that I get, and uh, begin to build on uh, a wealth creation a strategy that suits you, that doesn't just uh, go by the winds, but that says, look, uh, I am informed, I'm doing things from a perspective of knowledge. When you invest out of knowledge, then you, you succeed. Becky, before we move towards closure, would you like to t- tell us um, what you probably, I'm going to throw you under the bus a little bit here. Do you want to tell us uh, one a good story of what you thought was a, a successful, uh, a, a good success story of your investment life, and uh, where you, and then secondly, a mistake you made, which you said, "What was I thinking? How did I get myself into this?" In terms of thinking of investments. Okay. So, so like you rightfully said at the at the beginning, Dr. Makoni, that. Um, you know, we, we're trying to share as much information as we can mm-hmm. and, 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 and the individual members will definitely need to, you know, to get specific advice to assist mm-hmm. them. So, so I, I would say for me, the, the, the biggest success is just being able to start, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I think, you know, when, when I opened my first Unitrust account in South Africa, I was putting 500 rands per month, mm-hmm. right? Because that's all I could afford you know, to put at that particular point, mm-hmm. right? But over the years, I've been able to increase, you know, gradually, mm-hmm. right? So, 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 so I think often people, they overwhelm themselves by looking for, you know, the investments that are given the highest returns uh, and then end up even going into pyramid schemes or all sorts of uh, fraudulent, you know, investment vehicles. And there's plenty out there, mm-hmm. for, you know, by the way. So, so for me, my success has always been consistency and in, in starting small, you know, and, and I've grown over the years, you know, in terms of, you know, how much I can put away for retirement, mm. you know, or, you know, to make sure that you'll be able to, you know, to have a, a secure funny, you know, future. So I, I, would, I would maybe so say that's my biggest success. I think that that's great and it's congratulated. I think consistency is the key. And starting as early as is possible, because many people think, oh, I need to wait until I get a massive bonus. That's when I'm going to go and invest. But as a matter of fact, people who consistently invest regularly over time, they get better returns than people who do lump sums a once off. So, so I think it's important for people to realize that it's not the quantum of what I'm going to throw in right now, but it's saying, am I regular enough with a consistent amount that I'm saying, okay, from where I am, and I think with the last time we talked as, uh, as Victory Business Forum, we said investment is using current resources to create uh, long-term wealth. So already with what you have, you can start to invest. Uh, like you said, you started with 500, 
regularly, then the next time as his earnings increased, he, he continued to grow his portfolio. So that's what you can do. Don't wait until you have lots of money. Start right now. The, the earlier you start, the better. So that's a great success story. Tell us something that didn't work. Something that didn't work. Where you say, I made this mistake and I thought, I was, uh, I thought it was um, a great thing that I was doing. Uh, we, we, yeah. the, the reason I'm asking is so that it's easier yeah. for people to learn when they see where you did well and where you, where you, you made mistakes. Yeah. I have made uh, a significant share of my own mistakes. Yeah, so, so, so I, I think I've made quite a few, right? So the, the, the one was investing in, in property. Um, that didn't work very well for me. Um, and not that property is a bad investment, but that one particular one that I did was not a very good uh, uh, investment. Mm. And, 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 and the return has been negative, you know, very small to negative, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, so I think property is one of those as well that I think, you know, one has to really apply your mind, you know, in terms of why you, you, you're investing in, in, in property. So it, it's very easy to over-invest in property. Um, and, 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 and you could actually, you know, overstretch yourself and potentially end up with, with, with poor returns. So I would say property, particularly, you know, actual, you know, physical property, you know, uh, can can be a tricky one. And, and I've sort of bent myself there. So what? particularly you are, you're talking about if you are putting an investment with, uh, for example, for rental property and you're expecting a return out of that. So if you don't do a good due diligence, if you don't, uh, look at certain fundamentals. You you can buy the property and suddenly you have to be paying. If you don't have a tenant go in uh, for long periods of time, you are now going to have to pay the mortgage if you if you got it through loans and things. So it's important to be able to to make sure that you are well informed, you are well structured, and also make sure that you have a balanced portfolio. Because if you only have property. And you don't have uh, other forms to div- that diversify. It creates problems for you. So, so we can make mistakes. But again, in investments, it's always the key thing is that do due diligence, invest from a position of knowledge, seek knowledge. And what we are doing here is to just say, look, here is uh, an asset, uh, a way of investing that you can look into. Um, but go get knowledge before you commit. Uh, ours is to educate, to create awareness, but you need to go and dig deeper. We have an advisor who can walk you through, look at your situation, look at your capacity, look at your goals, and then helps you to, to invest in that way. Excellent. So, Becky, one piece of wisdom you want to leave uh, our members with? I think I would almost go back to, to, to the earlier point to say uh, prevention is better than cure. Right. Um, I think you know to start off with the basics well uh, is is will reward you very well, right? Um, and investing in yourself, you know, as you earn more, if you start with the right uh, principles, you will find that you'll be able to increase you know your 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 net worth and your ability to invest in and and grow your financial security. And, and, and I think you mentioned it earlier as well, just living within your means, right? You know, um, there's nothing wrong with uh, all the nice things, but I think if you can end them first, mm-hmm. you know, and be able to afford them without, you know, going into debt, I think it will put you in, 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 in a very good position. Wow. That's profound insight and wisdom. So thank you so much, Becky, for investing in us and um, in this discussion. And I want to encourage all the members, I trust that you, you can consider this as one of the investments that you can invest in. Look at um, the investments on the stock exchange. And today we discussed particularly two aspects. We discussed the issue of uh, investing using unit trust. But we also went down and said, look, before we even think of investment, 
You need to think about financial planning. You need to plan and have a strategy, have a, a plan, and then work towards a plan. Because it's not just a question of saying, now here is money, let me go and invest. You need to be investing according to a plan. It's almost like if you go start a business with no strategy, with no plan, and you're just saying, they, they'll, just make, they, they'll just work. It won't work. So it's important to have a game plan and say, okay, this is where I am. This is where I want to go. And we talked about the advantages that are there when you look at uh, uh, making sure that you exploit the opportunities that are available, uh, made available by the government through tax planning. They are tax-free investments which uh, encourage you to clearly consider um, in retirement annuities and tax-free investments. Those are things that we want to encourage people to uh, really consider and say, can I begin to invest in that way? Then we also talked about the issue of dealing with uh, debt to say you need to look at your debt and say, you know what, the, the, if I have consumer debt and it's uh, costing me this much, I need to intentionally and actively begin to, uh, to do away of that, with that debt because as Becky said, and the, as he was quoting from the Bible, whoever is uh, a borrower is servant to the lender. And as a child of God, you don't want to be a servant. So you want to create your wealth creation strategy based on uh, wisdom, prudence, and diligence. So it's important to be able to, to move along those lines. So we, as we close this session, we're going to get into a, a discussion forum for 30, 40 minutes where we just try to internalize, we break this in, and I, we, we, hopefully Becky will be available to just uh, engage again, like we said, this is not giving investment advice. It's just uh, educational, making sure that we, we understand so that we engage. So we, we appreciate it. We thank you. And let's just pray as we close, as we go on to a Zoom interactive session. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for Becky. We thank you for what you has shared. We thank you that, Father, you, you've given wisdom. You have given insight. And I pray that, Father, we, we, our people are getting knowledge. And now you are helping them to have wisdom to apply this knowledge. We thank you for insights, for wisdom, for application, and we thank you for open doors. And more importantly, we thank you that you are beginning to connect them with the advisors who can help them begin to start this journey to create wealth. We thank you and we honor you. Father, we speak a blessing on Beck, even as he is invested in us. May you bless him, may you increase his impact and his influence for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Becky. We really appreciate uh, the time we've spent with you and we, we, we hope uh, you can join us in the interactive session. Thank you so much. And it's, a, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Th thank you.